welcome to another week of our photo analyses of last week's photos uh well, sorry this coming week's photos but first a look at last week's did we learn anything new no we didn't really um i don't think anybody came up with any more information for us uh which is just the way it goes sometimes people were impressed by this photo uh they certainly got a lot of likes and shares and things like that um so you know it's great to see when they do pick up uh it's brilliant really um to see these getting the recognition and yeah so what i would like to say is that we now have a date in the diary of the 15th of the 16th of july 2022 to come along and join us at the national army museum and see some of these photos on display and you're basically a day of machine gunnery a spotlight saturday go and have a look at our video and you will um you know learn much more about it uh and yeah i think it'd be a great day please do come along and join us if you've got any interest in the machine gun corps whatsoever that is the day after the 100th anniversary of the disbandment of the machine gun corps everybody did agree that this probably is a woman dressed up um bob we have uh named her in honor of blackadder goes forth which you just need to go and watch or any of the blackadder series because they're hilarious not a documentary though uh this one got quite a lot of uh, interest as well so yeah quite late on what we did learn was that the um motor machine gun corps titles and the shoulder titles being worn alongside each other that's a little bit interesting uh, but the motor machine gun corps shoulder titles were certainly the 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 cloth ones were worn from the start to the war all the way through depending on um you know yeah irrespective of when they were serving and here's a reminder of our logo to commemorate this uh, anniversary year the centenary of the disbandment of the machine gun corps but also the centenary when machine gunnery really comes into its own 1922 when it's handed back to the infantry battalions and the machine gun and, and the cavalry regiments and you know serves us now in a way that we would recognize 100 years ago um as being machine gunnery so you know hopefully you're still enjoying these photos please do support us on patreon where you can at www.patreon dot com forward slash vickers mg uh, to help us fund our time and effort that we put into this material um and get some access to additional uh you know information and stuff as well through that um but yeah thanks thanks for watching these so far and hopefully you enjoy the photos that come in uh in the week ahead for our patrons or in the week just gone um and learn a little bit more about them so this photo a nice portrait of somebody in khaki drill uniform and uh so probably probably india maybe maybe middle east mesopotamia but uh, i don't know something sort of says india maybe it's the uh, the type of sort of background backdrop there but we, yeah motor machine gun core uh so motor machine guns you can just see the m mg underneath the cross guns on the cap badge there uh so what can what else is is there yeah you know, that's obviously on his service dress cap uh rather than a khaki drill cap so yeah service dress cap we then got a lanyard dark colored lanyard uh, of for some purpose he's got a swagger stick under his arm he's wearing a 1903 pattern belt uh he's got his top button undone and he's got you know the bottom pockets don't have buttons on this i don't know if that's a particular type or whether that's just in general we've got corporal stripes and above the corporal stripes i think we've got the wreath with the mg in the middle there so we see that as i think i've said in quite a few sort of period photos being worn above the stripes typically it would indicate an instructor position but that's not what this is that's just because that's where he's carrying it looks like he's got a cigar cigar or cigarillo something like that in his hand or maybe a, a, a yeah could be a pen or something like that then he's got his breeches and his leather uh, leather leggings atop his boots so nothing of any particular detail but nice to see this studio shot of this chap from the motor machine guns despite such a good photo we have no information to support it though obviously the mmgs has been added by by uh, by graham over the looks of it um and no other information on the back sadly now this is a uh, official photograph prank copyright reserved that's been turned into a postcard uh, daily mail war picture so this is one of the one of the sort of series of postcards that they were uh, producing uh, or you know different aspects there's some really quite famous ones because they got reused a lot you know a lot across all of the newspapers um what's quite nice obviously is it is the motor machine gun corps leaving camp i believe it's part of a series from 1918 if i remember rightly from the imperial war museum series uh 
but it's what's a little bit frustrating for me is there is if we look in this top corner here you can see you know we've got something so this this triangle probably battery rather than battalion it might be b a t t n um but i think it's battery um motor motor machine guns on the side there i can't work what work out what that is so maybe maybe you can help so i'm just going to reduce the size of the pen there so maybe you can see what that is a little bit is that an e or an n i'm tempted to say it's an n so, so triangle battalion um motor machine guns uh certainly we'll have to look that up and perhaps look at the caption on the back of the imperial war museum information what we can also see i think this is what it is i think this is a wagon wheel with a pole and on top of it is the um is a machine gun on its tripod there or set up so looks to be like it could be a lewis gun i don't know they wouldn't Lewis guns were were on Mark IV mountings, but that looks like it could be an anti-aircraft post. So that's what I'm looking at there. Anti-aircraft machine gun um, setup. Maybe, yeah, this is a bit distorted around this area. So maybe it is a Vickers. Um, looks a bit longer, a bit too long. Uh, no, it wouldn't do because it's uh, reversed, isn't it? So what we've got is the wheel here. Let's take this line out. The wheel here, the tripod there, the gun up. And then the crosshead comes this way but what we've got is the um so the reason it looks so long here is because we've got the gun pointing that way so it's reversed so it's only on the um the pin there so that it gets better traverse so or sorry better elevation because you can pivot the gun here and you can get right underneath it so you've got really good elevation and really good traverse so i'm pretty sure that's what that detail is uh once we now we've zoomed in and had a look which is quite cool um i can't perhaps i need to revise my motorbikes i can't tell you what bike this is um you know typically my mind says vickers Kleino, uh but you can just see the broad arrow on the front of the shield there which is quite nice um what have we got a gun with a mark one uh, muzzle attachment but nothing else i can tell you obviously they're in steel helmets they are equipped as cavalry and what you know so we see the 1903 pattern belt quite a bit but here we have the cavalry mess tins mounted onto the water bottle so yeah so they are equipped as cavalry uh cavalry troops which is quite nice um the motorcycles behind are just all in a line and then we've got the officer on his single well, yeah it looks like an officer because it's open collar on there on his single um rather than a combination is solo motorcycle rather than a combination uh which you, which again is quite nice so that's obviously the spare wheel uh, on the back there and you can just see the two gallon can stuck between there certainly recommend if you're interested in this stuff having a look at the uh parts manual that we have in the collection uh that details all of you know all of the content and you know, actually it's a it's a parts list for the motorcycle so it gives you all of the information about what components make up the motorcycle um i can't ever see us getting one in the collection here sadly uh but you know certainly maybe a maybe a replica one day who knows so what have we got we've got one two three four five six seven and possibly an eighth combination in there um and the one solo motorcycle as well so you know quite a rain quite you know this unit is uh, heading out i think that's a whole battery eight again i'd have to check or it's a half battery um yeah quite quite nice anyway to see that and certainly to spot the uh, the anti-aircraft post there just next to the bow tents in the back um with the white painted stones that aren't just ceremonial but really do help see where you're going at night um without the need for lamps and you've got some trucks in the back as well so you've got oh yeah there's a bigger one huh, thought it was a tent um you've got some trucks and motor transport in the back that supported the motorcycles with all of their additional equipment that was required five so you can see as i said daily mail official war pictures postcard regimental series number 22 motor machine gun corps battery leaving camp in answer to a signal so that implies that you know it's a sort of scramble kind of um action uh yeah they were used in that way uh, you know for to, to counter breakthroughs and stuff like that but uh, to have the photographer there is awfully convenient so uh, let's say it was an exercise and they were just moving off so another motor machine gunner in this uh, this photo. 
so again we can just see the MMG but what I can just notice about this cat badge is that it has the Pericapelluccio I think that's the pronunciation uh, sight on it so it's the earlier uh, motor machine gun service cat badge rather than the motor machine gun core cat badge and that's just the difference in the in the rear sight that's on the guns on the cat badges it's very subtle and obviously some will survive for the whole war um you know and, and they'll just be used they, they, they look very similar um but we've got that on his service dress uh, on the service dress cap we've got a lanyard being worn there looks like we've got the shadow there of the motor machine guns title which as we learned from one of the comments this week that it was worn throughout the war so it's motor machine guns uh, i think it's red on gray or yeah i think it's red on gray if i remember rightly and we can just see that shadow there and we've got the cross hatching quite nicely done on the uh, on the lance corporal stripes too so it looks to be just general service buttons on the on the uh, on the jacket um nothing much more i can tell you about this chap i don't think uh, it's obviously in one of those fake studios again nice um, so actually what's quite interesting is that we, he just has putties rather than uh, the leather leggings that we see more commonly with the or have seen more commonly with the motor machine gun service so uh, yeah maybe he wasn't a motorcyclist he was just uh, you know one of the other people within the batteries um, but yeah and quite nicely polished boots too uh, so we've got a nice bit of information. We've got W Bound from Tooting, Southwest London, and we've got a name, which is always great. So we've got Lance Corporal Foster, Machine Gun Corps, twenty uh, seventh of the July, nineteen fifteen. So that's before the formation of the MGC. Um, so obviously, yeah, supports the motors and born in Killin, Tayside. So uh, yeah enough that you would think to find out some more about this person uh, but Graham check the database and there's no trace of the man but there are two possibilities so he could be number 1061 machine gun core motors ex motor machine gun service royal artillery or number 2071 uh, machine gun core motors ex motor machine gun service royal artillery uh, don't know anything about either man so if you are able to look into that and find out some more then great uh, a few notes on the postcard on the back as well. So machine gun corps formed, you know, we know that. Cat badges issued around January 1916, but if we look, you know, this cat badge is earlier than that. And it says just note cloth titles and the lanyard. So, yeah, um, quite nice to, to have that information, but it's one of those tantalisingly close uh, identifications that we just can't find anything more about the individual that, that sort of suffer. You know, machine gun corps research really suffers with that. So this is an interesting photo, isn't it? Because, it, uh, yeah, we can see the Barrett blocks. I think this is this doesn't seem to be in the UK. Some of it sort of tells me India again. Um, looks like they're all in service dress, though. Uh, we've got this sort of light khaki drill cap on this chap and possibly on the back here. We then have a couple in field service caps here that were, as we, we learned previously, were authorised for use in India. They're all wearing 1908 pattern equipment. Um, they, apart from this chap here, is in 1903 a bandolier and 1903 pattern belt and individual pouches by the looks of it as well. But if we just take those out, it looks like we've got some different rifles. So if we just zoom into this guy here, this could be a, um, a pattern 14, a 1914 pattern. Uh, Enfield rifle, the number three, as opposed to uh, yeah, as opposed to number number one Mark three. I th this looks to be a number one Mark three, so the SMLE that we're you know normal uh, normally seeing. So it looks to be like a really mixed unit, mi perhaps a mixed training unit. That looks to be like a number three again, four end. Um, I don't think they're that. I, yeah, I can't tell enough from my knowledge that they're anything different to number three they might be um and then say number one mark three definitely looks like on that one uh but yeah a, a mix and but all with that 1908 pattern web equipment we've got you know, machine gun core cap badges on all of them we have machine gun core collar dogs on them as well so that's interesting again that sort of implies this is a little bit post-war 
so we very rarely see them um, outside of the machine gun guards during wartime uh, so yeah it's um, it's in interesting to see that sort of level of detail on um, um, what I can't really I, just, I don't think there's anything much more you know there's another one of those soft uh, khaki drill caps um, on there and if we, we look, you know, just got different huts. Number two hut there doesn't really tell us anything more about the unit, though. Um, and I don't think that, that, that that's a sign, but it's unreal. Oh, in case of fire, that is. So in case of fire, but I don't think we can, you know, discern anything more from that. Um, yeah, so just that's just a nice unit photo of looks like a mixed training unit, possibly. And sadly, there's nothing on the back to really help us with it about it either. Um, it's obviously in English, um, but I don't, don't think it's the UK. Part of me makes, part of me thinks it is UK because of that mix of rifles, um, but I'm really not sure. So, uh, hope any ideas on that? Then do let us know. Now, this is a really smartly turned out chap look. So, um, what can I tell you? Let's work from the top. So. Um, you know, machine gun core cap badge, service dress cap, blah blah blah. Uh, MGCI by the looks of it on his shoulder title there he looks to be wearing under here some sort of um unit formation patch but i can't work out what it is so it also looks like he's actually got machine gun core buttons on I'll try and zoom in a bit more uh can you just see the shape of the guns crossing those so that would imply it's quite late on um you know he's really smart turned out so you know you'll see from now the, these sort of photos make me think that it's like almost occupation germany um yeah period we've got white lanyard uh maybe uk we've got um lance corporal stripes whitened possibly um swagger stick sticking out there nice polished 1903 pattern belt with square buckle so it may not be a 1903 pattern you'll have somebody have to tell me then we've got good conduct stripe two wound stripes at least might be another one on the edge and then three overseas service stripes so yeah back in the uk perhaps 1918 1919 um going down we've got his putties and boots very highly polished boots and possibly wearing breeches so maybe um well he's not motors he's not cavalry we know that because it says eye on his shoulder uh but maybe mounted uh as in you know driver or something like that but it seems to be they're very well tailored or he's wearing wearing breeches so yeah can't tell you much more about what it where who what why but yeah smart smart chap indeed uh very little information on the back other than the photographer's information w rogers stanley studio stanley road wellingborough so that's northamptonshire maybe this is a grantham photo or nearby uh up there uh, maybe that photographer made his way across so um that certainly supports the machine gun corps infantry look uh and um, say towards the end of the war uh, another super you know section photo so we've got the two guns and you know i just think th these are my favorite photos definitely um we've got the two guns there let's take a look at those first and we've got a you know um i don't know 16, 1916 production gun by the looks of it and the mark one muzzle cone looks like single arch top cover but mark one rear sight slab sides a little bit um a little bit of lightning on there uh I, i'm just gonna say this is in france um is it a yeah, looks to be well worn. We've got the belt box carriers, number three belt box, wooden belt box in there, and a uh, spare parts case, leather spare parts case. It's the Mark One, and we've got the Mark One direction dial and a Mark One elevating wheel, and there is the leather strap there for the auxiliary tripod to be carried or to carry the gun when the auxiliary tripod is fitted. Um, which is which is quite nice to see the other gun we have is exactly the same um by the looks of it yeah but we do have the number three belt box with but with the uh rainproof lid on it so that's quite nice looks like just so we can say it looks like we've got a circle around something here um this line here what are we doing is that just a scratch mark or is that a circle to say this person here is the person this is about so um or maybe this person here don't know um because the circle's too big it, it, normally it would be a lot smaller wouldn't it uh but yeah so that's the guns um then for some reason this chap here is sat with a box in front of him i don't know what that box is off the top of my head oh no it's just stretcher bearer look. so um or stretcher bearer 
not of the machine gun corps so maybe that's a royal army medical corps cat badge um and maybe those shoulder titles are ramc so they were oh, wow maybe they were attached i don't know but that may be his stretcher bearers box of bits um we've then got a uh so let's start to look at the uniforms let's do a big look first so all apart from that chap there all wearing machine gun called cap badges i think oh no the officer in the middle is wearing a uh, maltese cross is that so maybe king's royal rifle corps um he's certainly not uh yeah so yeah i'm gonna say king's royal rifle corps because we've got black buttons um and looks like he's got twin uh could be Buckinghamshire Battalion. He's got two straps on his Sam Brown, um, which you see in the Ox and Bucks Light Infantry, of which the Buckinghamshire Battalion were part. So, um, so that looks like uh, we got, yeah. So maybe he's one of the one of the officers attached to the unit there, um, not fully in the machine gun corps yet, but this officer obviously is. So yeah, it's nice to see that actually. I quite like that. But everybody else, machine gun corps cap badges. We've got a mix of equipment um we've got pistol order on some of them so yeah in his pistol case there with the 1914 paddle kit 1914 pistol 1914 but rifle ammunition pouches we've then got the sergeant there looks to be like wearing 1908 pattern no it could be 1914 pattern um with a pistol in there we've then got the officers in there sam browns let's turn that one off we've then got um it's been 1914 pattern with pistol on the sergeant then corporal um 1914 then we've got some 1908 pattern uh equipment there rifle pattern equipment this guy's not wearing any because you know he, he's just turned up got on the edge of the photo 1914 pattern rifle equipment there 1908 pattern 1914 08 14 pistol order on the uh 1914 pattern um, we've got no 08 pistol, I don't think. So that's just you know, something that we haven't observed that much. It seems that you know, 08, um, un unless where it's expedient, uh, 08 seems to be, or sorry, 14 pattern pistol equipment seems to be much more the order of the day. They all seem to be pretty much standard other than, other than that. Um, can't re can you see any medal ribbons, gallantry awards or anything like that? No, not on not on the men and not on the officers um which is you know interesting and then we've got one chap sat at the front with his dog um whether it's his dog or not but it's certainly a dog british army photos never really complete unless they've got a dog in them um so so yeah not a nice unit photo say showing that whole section uh section of men um behind their guns so supporting the view that this is in France, car postal, correspondence address, um, from Jim to mother. Uh, so we see this on the French postcards as well. The M is for Monsieur, Madame, Mademoiselle, yeah, whoever that's being sent to. Uh, but it's from Jim to mother. A section of MGC in France is what somebody's later written. Maybe Jim's the one in that circle. We don't know. Um, sadly, we can't tell which unit it is either. It's another smartly turned out man. The watermarks come through quite heavy on this one. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, so we've got machine gun called cap badge on his service dress cap. I can't see any insignia. Maybe there's some on his shoulder strap there, but not really obvious as to what that is. Maybe it's just the MGC shoulder title. Um, obviously, he's got a crop uh, there. And let's say that um, he's got his 1903 pattern bandolier on there. So just that. So let, we're going to say he's mounted. And that's supported by the fact that he's wearing breeches and spurs by the looks of it as well. And he's got his putties done up, um, wrapped at the bottom that we see much more commonly with mounted troops. Um, because it doesn't cause that additional rubbing and additional chafing. Uh, can't really say anything much more about him from the front though. But that's a very nice and trimmed moustache. So we do have enough information on this one, thankfully, to identify him. Uh, and he's been identified as 13356 MGC. And this is a nice dated photograph, 30th of July 1918, with fondest love from Will uh, to Mrs. Al Redmond, 51 Victoria Road, Portfield, Chichester, uh, Sussex. So Postfield, Portfield, um, not really sure. Uh, so check the database on this one. And what we've got is 13356 William Thomas Redman enlisted as 8298 in the 3rd Battalion of the Royal Sussex Regiment on an unknown date. He compulsorily transferred to the Machine Gun Corps on the 26th of 
February 1916, so he'd been in almost two and a half years by that point. He served in France and Flanders in 48th Company of 16 Divisions, the 16th Division. Uh, but he was wounded on July in July 1917 um, as an accidental wound to his right hand. He was then discharged eventually to Class Z Reserve on the 9th of March 1919, with his address at that time at 51 Victoria Road, Portfield, Chichester. So this is Portfield here, um, Chichester. So he goes back home to to his wife by the looks of it, um, which is sort of a nice way to to, to end that. Um, but he's known to have served as a special constable during the second world war and received the special constable's medal with an additional bar for service up to 1954 so he carried on serving his country um you know as a special constable during that second world war and the mgc must have so many of those stories of people that carried on in that well the british army you know the the, the men that were old enough to do these jobs in the second world war had been soldiers in the great war so uh yeah it's um a nice sort of round out there that he carried on and got that additional service up to 19 54. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Please support us on Patreon if you're able to and let us know of anything you'd like to see in the future. I look forward to hearing from you.